And now it is my great pleasure uh, to begin our celebration of our Heron Class of 2017. To provide remarks on behalf of the Class of 2017, I am proud to introduce to you this year's Melissa Mulliken Award winner, rower Caroline Loritan. <laughs> Michael Jordan once said that fear is often just an illusion. Now, with all due respect to one of the greatest basketball players of our time, I don't agree. Because I know for certain that for over 275 female athletes gathered in this room, for their families, coaches, for the dozens of community members gathered here tonight, fear is a very real, very scary thing. We fear pain, suffering. We fear loss, being alone. We fear rejection, injury, mistakes. We fear 2K erg tests <laughs> and 6K runs. Pressure free throws, basketball. <laughs> win sprints and the singles match that determines a team's win or loss. We fear challenge matches that determine our position on the team. We fear that first tee shot at a tournament, the Manchester, the 21 club. We fear VO2 max bright and early on the first day of preseason and the start of the first sailing regatta. We also fear defining our culture as the newest William Smith team on campus. And it's funny that that which we athletes fear the most is oftentimes exactly what we set ourselves up for, failure. We fear not being good enough, that despite giving it our all, our all may not be the best. And because we fear failure, sometimes we avoid it altogether, letting ourselves become mediocre for the sake of avoiding the possibility of excellence. We fear what we're capable of. One of the greatest things about joining a collegiate sport, whether you were a recruit or walk on, is that you have no idea what you're capable of beyond high school. And you don't expect too much of yourself at first. I have a vivid memory of going into my first ever 2K ERG test. It was my sophomore year and I had graduated from novice to varsity, surrounded by dozens of the fittest, most mentally tough human beings I had ever met. And because it was my first real 2K, I held no standard for myself. All I knew was that if it didn't hurt, I probably wasn't doing it right. And under no circumstances besides fainting or death was I allowed to get up. In the days leading up to the test, I remember hearing older girls around me announcing that they already wanted to throw up and that they weren't mentally ready for the pain. Instead of embracing the upcoming test as an opportunity to see how fast these girls had become, they were crippled by fear. And there I was in the middle of all of this, already terrified of something with which I had nothing to lose. On the day of the test, I waltzed into the office of my former teammate and current assistant coach, Libby Hughes. And I said, I'm freaking out Libby with an empty 2K testing sheet in my hand. She goes, well, why is that? And I looked at her for a little bit and I said, well, everybody else is freaking out. And anybody who knows Libby knows that the following is a very Libby-esque response. She said, wait, no, that's awesome, with a huge <laughs> smile. And I stood there staring at her like she had three heads. How could somebody who seemed so mentally stable possibly respond to such a life or death situation? It's good to be nervous, she said. It's basically the same thing as excitement. Um, it's just, you know, adrenaline, free speed, go get it. <laughs> Although I clearly didn't get the response that I wanted, and I didn't get a nice pat on the back telling me that everything would be okay, I realized I had no other choice. I was going to 2K, and it would probably hurt. And it did, a lot. There were a few tears and some mental debates that started something like who invented this sport. But what I learned from the second my final time flashed in front of that screen was that nothing, not fear, not even a walk-on label, could define my success. I was liberated from any standard, 
I was a walk-on. I had no time to beat, no seat to race into, no number, no goal whatsoever. I had no fear of failure because I didn't know what that looked like. All I knew was that if I didn't feel like I had given 100% by the end of those 2,000 meters, then I would have been the biggest failure on that entire team, regardless of my final time. So when Libby congratulated me and said, wow, that was pretty good for your first 2K, it clicked. I could do this. Now, as a senior rower, I have a constant swarm of numbers in my head telling me what I should be going or what I could be going if I did X or what I could have done if I changed Y. I find that those numbers are restricting. We put ourselves in boxes because we think that's what we're capable of. We compare stats, assists, goals, points, matches won and lost from this season to last season because that's who you are, but it's not. Truth is, the box that you put yourself in is much bigger than you believe, and your capacity for greatness is even bigger than that. But the problem is that the fear of breaking out of that box can seem just as big. On my weakest days, I try to channel the rower with no idea what success felt or looked like. I try to imagine what I would act like, what numbers I would see if I didn't set a number to my name. And what I found is that fear, as Libby reminded me, is actually pretty darn cool. Fear is what reminds us that we're pushing ourselves, that we're growing, that we're expanding that comfort zone. If I ever sit down to 2K and feel no fear whatsoever, I'll know that that goal isn't high enough, that I can reach higher. A day you feel no fear is a day that you're cheating yourself because facing failure when your aim is set for the moon is a million times better than sitting on solid ground. And so my challenge to you is to listen to Eleanor Roosevelt instead of Michael Jordan, because she said to do one thing every day that scares you. If you see numbers that you've never seen before, go faster. If you score a thousand career points, score again. If you've already beaten every team in the Liberty League and you have a million trophies to prove it, ask for more. If you find yourself in lane three with open water, go farther. And if you seniors, as proud William Smith women, find yourself shattering glass ceilings, keep climbing. Because there is no label and there will never be a limit. And you can let the fear of erasing those limits cripple you or you can let it propel you, because fear is the only thing that reminds us that we're challenging ourselves, that we're asking for more, and that we are slowly but surely breaking down every barrier to success. Thank you.